Today, the manners and the etiquettes we'll be talking about today, inshallah, as a reminder for all of us, is going and uh, entering into someone else's house. The very first thing is that today, inshallah, I'm going to share a few things with you. Number one is that we learn from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we learn from the Quran that when you enter into someone's house, there are two things you must do. Allah subhanahu wa taala in the Quran says, "Ya ayyuha ladina amanu, la tadkhulu buyutan ghayr buyutikum, hatta two things: tastanisu, seek permission, wa tusallimu." Number two. So you must seek permission and then make salam. Now, in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, this is Fath Makkah. The Prophet alayhi wasallam is in Makkah, and we all know that even though Makkah was conquered, he still went back to Medina and he resided in Medina till the end days of his life. And we find that there was a man who sent one of his khadims, is one of his servants. There was a person by the name of Safwan ibn Umayyah. He sent some milk and some food for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This man, perhaps he was not aware, he was not properly educated. He came inside the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the place where he was staying. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Irji, go back." And then he says, "Fakul." Assalamu alaikum aadkhul, and you must say Assalamu alaikum aadkhul. Can I enter? So this is Rasulullah Sallam telling this man, go back to the door, say Assalamu alaikum, and then you enter into the house. Now, in addition to that, we also find that there was another story about a man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he wanted to come inside the house of the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam. There was a person there with the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet sent that man said that go and teach this man some etiquettes. So you see that if the Prophet ﷺ saw that someone was not observing etiquettes, the Prophet ﷺ said go and teach this man some etiquettes, and that what he should do, he should first say Assalamu Alaikum and then take permission and then he can enter. So in the Quran, so we see that there are two hadith. In both hadith, we find something very consistent. The Prophet ﷺ is teaching us, say Assalamu Alaikum, then you ask permission to enter. However, in the Quran, when Allah says the ayah I recite to you earlier, He says, "Hatta tastani suwa tu salimu." It's reversed. First, seek permission, and then Allah mentions seeking permission first, and then making salam. So the ulama, so many people have asked this question: How do you reconcile between the two? The ulama have said that in this ayah of the Quran. It is not a sequence because in the Arabic language, if you're ta- if you're trying to talk about a sequence of events, then you then you use the word thumma. Had Allah said hatta tastanisu thumma tu salimu, then that would be Allah saying you must first seek permission, then you say assalamu alaikum. That's not what Allah is saying here. He's using the word wow, which means and, meaning that you can do either one of the two. So the ulama they say that if you want to be closest to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, then you first say assalamu alaikum, then you seek permission. Now, how do we understand these things in this day and age? First thing I will say is this: when it comes to our kids, we need to teach them when you enter the house, you don't say, "Hey, I'm here." Okay, many of our kids they do that kind of stuff. You say assalamu alaikum. When you enter the house, say assalamu alaikum. But here's what's more more important about this hadith: the fact that the Prophet ﷺ sent a grown man. Think about that for a moment. He sent an adult back to the door and said, "Go back, say assalamu alaikum, and then take permission." Shows us that when our kids don't do these kind of things, it is perfectly fine. In fact. It is endorsed by Rasulullah sallam, encouraged by the Prophet sallam. As we can see, he did this in the case of an adult. We should send our kids back to the door and say, "When you enter, say assalamu alaikum." Now, you know, our kids, you know, they be, like, "Oh, I don't want to do this." You know, they they don't like anything. Okay, well, come on, next time. No, 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 no. Go back to the door, enter into the door, say assalamu alaikum. Oh, come on, next time. No, no, no. Do it now. You understand? The fact that the Prophet sallam did it. And he told this grown man once again, 
there's nothing wrong in pushing your children. Because see, here's one thing we need to teach our children. We got to keep on reminding them, keep on hammering it on them. You understand? Till it becomes part of their DNA. Until it becomes part of who they are, their nature. So when they come inside the house, say assalamu alaikum. This is something very important. Now in this day and age, we all, you know, many of us, we have these, you know, these ring doorbells, okay? Okay, we're giving, mashallah, so much business to ring, okay? So what happens is that when you, when you push that button, okay, and someone says, you know, who is it? Or, you know, in many of our doors, we have those, in many of our doors, we have the small windows, right? You open that small window, you see who it is. The first thing we should teach always our children is, instead of saying, this is who I am I, say, assalamu alaikum. Because honestly, when someone comes to the door, imagine you have come to the door, you have no idea who it is. It's at night. But if someone says on the other side, assalamu alaikum, automatically, tell me, don't you feel a little comfortable? Yes or no? It makes anyone comfortable, right? So that's why the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu are extremely effective. So that is why the very first thing is, when it comes to going to someone's house, always make salam um, all, in all cases. And once again, I will say this, if the kids come inside the house without making salam, send them back and then make them say salam. Number two, it is also recorded from the Prophet ﷺ that one time a man came and he was standing right in front of the door of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, even many of our kids, they will, oh, they will knock on the door and they'll just stand right there in front of the door, okay? And you open the door and they're standing right there, okay? Not even a little from the door, they're like, okay? So the thing is that what, you need, what we need to do is from the akhlaq and from the adab that we learned from the Prophet ﷺ, because the Prophet ﷺ taught this young man who was doing this, that stand away from the door and stand either on the right side or the left side. Okay, this is something that we got to teach our children because many times our youth and our children, we, they don't understand these kind of things. Once again, it's not really their fault. They're just, a lot of times, they're not simply educated about these kind of matters. So when you go to someone's house, you knock on the door, you take a few steps back, you stand on the right side or the left side and stand in a place on the side the door opens. So if, if someone is opening the door, they don't have to look in the opposite direction. If you're opening the door, you open the door and you look out, you can see that person right away. You understand? Don't stand on the opposite direction, but stand on the side where the person opens the door, he can see you right away. This is something else we learned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three, peeping into other people's homes. This is something that's very common, okay? Someone opens the door and I'm going to share with you a story and I'm not making the story up, but you know, you find people who are like this. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very, very big on people's privacy. He always made sure that people respect other people's privacy. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now, I'm not encouraging this. Okay, the Prophet alaihi wasallam is making a statement over here that if someone looks into your house and you gouge their eye, there is no sin on you. That's what the Prophet alaihi wasallam is saying. He's trying to get a point across that this person has committed such a crime that he's trying to, you know, he's trying to violate your privacy. Now, I remember one time I opened the door and there was a person and I, I've opened the door just a little, okay? Now, whatever reason it is, a lot of times people don't like to open the entire door. Some people may open the entire door, marhaban bikum, okay, no problem, you know? But some people like to open the door a little. And I remember there was a person that came to my house and he's, and they're trying to like open the door. They're trying to push the door, okay? You can't be pushing someone's door, okay? So, and especially happens, let me be very, let me be very blunt about this. Especially, especially when you go to someone's house and they bought a new house, okay? Oh, I want to get inside the house. It's an itch, okay? I want to go inside that house. And they're trying to, you know, you come, someone brings some, you know, mitai, okay? And you bring it to their house and then, you know, you know, trying to look inside the house? No. It's against the adab. And we got we to gotta understand that. See, as adults, we are doing these kind of things. If we're doing these kind of things, our kids eventually, they will do these kind of things. So, respecting people's privacy. And that, you know, by the way, when you talk about people's privacy, on a side, on a side note here, this also includes people's personal lives. I mean, there are some people, subhanAllah, they just have this need 
and this desire to know about everything in, a, in a, another person's personal life. Mind your own business. I actually gave a, I gave a talk about this before too, learning how to mind your own business. So this is something that we have to do uh, in our homes. And I would say part of this same topic or same point is, if you go to someone's house and you don't get invited inside the house, let's just say you need something for someone, they come outside and they talk to you. Most people might say, come inside. But it's very possible that their house is probably a mess. They don't like to show their house is probably a mess going on. Something's going on inside the house. But you find a lot of people, they get offended by these kind of things. Why did he not call me inside his house, you know? And they get offended by these kind of things and they tell other people about it. You need to, we all need to learn how to respect people's privacy. If I go to someone's house and they don't invite me inside their house, khalas is not a big deal, you know? Learn how to have a bigger heart, learn how to respect their privacy and move on. Number four, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions, إِذَا اسْتَأْذَنَ أَحَدُكُمْ ثَلَاثًا فَلَمْ يُؤْذَنْ لَهُ فَلْيَنْصَرِفْ The Prophet Alaihi Wasallam is teaching us that when you go to someone's house and you are seeking permission to enter, then do it three times. And in three times, if you don't get a response, then return back. Now, you know, some people, they go there to someone's house they might ring the doorbell. Now, by the way, there is a story that we find in the books that Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, one time he invited a, a man by the name of Abdullah ibn Qais. And Abdullah ibn Qais came to the house of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an, and once again, you're talking about that time, not in this day and age, at that time. So he called out the name of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an. Umar al-Khattab did not hear him. He, he said it three times. He sought permission three times based on the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salam. And then he left. And Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he was informed that Abdullah ibn Qais came to your home and he left. He says, I was waiting for him. So he went after Abdullah ibn Qais radiallahu anhu and he then said that why did you not, you know, why did you not um, call me? He says, I came to your home to seek permission three times. I did exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did and I left. So what the ulama, they say based on that story, because Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu did not hear Abdullah ibn Qais inside. So what we learn from this story is that you must seek permission in a way that they are informed inside. In our day and age, that problem has been resolved, okay? You have a doorbell, they, clear, they can easily hear it, and you, you, you push the doorbell three times, and you ring it three times, and if you, if, even if they are there, you know, there are people who say, oh, I know they're still inside. Who cares they're inside, okay? You are not supposed to be standing there, and you know, you know subhanAllah, just part of the etiquettes, like ding, 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 okay? No, you push it once, and you wait for a while, have some sabr, okay? And then you push it again after probably a few seconds or several seconds, and then you wait again. And then the third time, and even, and even if you can hear them inside, still you walk away, simple as that. Now, unless they are expecting you, they have told you that I'm waiting for you at my home, they probably are preoccupied with something, they know you're coming, then you can probably ring it you know, a few more times, but otherwise, three times, and please, you know, this is something we gotta teach our children. I, went to, I remember one time some, someone came to my home. Oh my God, it was annoying, okay? So please, this is something that we have to, have to teach. The next thing is that when we respond, like if someone is at the door and someone says, who is it? So there was a man who came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jabir radiallahu anh said that I came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he says that, um, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu says, who is it? And Jabir said, Ana. Now, who is Ana? Okay. He said, Me. Now, who's me? You understand? So, he, so the Prophet, والسلام, in a sarcastic way, he said, Ana, Ana. Okay. Like he said, Ana. He goes, Ana, Ana. You know? So the Prophet والسلام, is teaching him, you don't, say, you don't say Ana because that does not clarify to the person inside the house who exactly is, are you talking about here? So that is why even when you go to someone's house, you always, even if you ring the doorbell and they respond to you through the ring that who is it, you say, Assalamu Alaikum, this is who, um, such and such person, mention your name and you clarify it. Now if you say, if you give a name or you say something, even in the case of Zainab, there was a woman who came to the Prophet her name was Zainab also. But the Prophet he knew how many Zainabs, right? 
His daughter's name is Zainab. And then he had a wife named Zainab. And there were so many other Zainabs inside the community. So if there's a name that you have and the person may not be expecting you, you have to make it very clear. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, Ayyu Zainab. Which Zainab are you? You understand? So you make, you make that uh, very, very clear. Uh, you clarify that. Um, the next thing, uh, number six, is uh, I said this earlier that if you are given permission, you enter into the house. If you're not given permission, you can leave. Now, something that we have seen with many people, especially when they go to the homes, you know, we see this overseas often. They go to the homes of the shiyukh and so forth. And the one thing that we have seen, even in the case of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there were Bedouin men who came to the house of the Prophet alayhi salam while the Prophet was busy with his family. So what happened was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that instead of you disturbing Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if you were to stand outside and be patient, till the Prophet ﷺ comes out and addresses your need that is better for you so that is why we find many, many ulama they would out of respect for their teachers they would sometimes sit outside the door of their teachers and just wait for them not bother them not harass them just sit outside and wait for the teachers out of adab and respect this is fine however however if the person says that don't stand outside my house, I don't like you standing outside my house, I will meet you some other time, you have to honor their, uh, you have to honor their request. So it is fine if you are waiting and you're not harassing anyone and so forth, but at the same time, if you are being asked to leave, then you should, you should leave. Number seven, this is a big one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He says, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدُوا فِيهَا أَحَدًا فَلَا تَدْخُلُوهَا حَتَّى يُؤْذَنَ لَكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you find a place and there is no one in it, do not enter that house. Now let me give you a very practical example. You know, around here, this masjid, when many of these homes were being built, these are private land, right? Yes or no? These are all private land. Every, some people would buy the land and they're purchase, they purchase the land, they're building the house on it. This house, this land belongs to who? It belongs to them, okay? While the houses are being built over here, there are many people, they were just going into the homes while the houses were being built, okay? Now, let me say this very clear. It's a little different. When you go to like a subdivision where you have a huge company that is building a home, you understand? Now, they're building all these homes. Some, some of the lots say sold, some say, you know, open and so forth. But the company that is building, the contractor or the, uh, the, the company itself, they have no problem of people entering into their home and just checking out their floor plans. We see this often. There's nothing wrong with that. However, if you know that this land belongs to someone in particular, and, that, and they're building a house on top of that in particular, then in that situation, you're not allowed to enter into their house. You're not allowed to enter their house. Yet we find a lot of people still going into their homes and just searching and, you know, and checking it out and so forth. This is something that is not allowed in any, in, under any circumstances. Once again, if the company has made it public that you can enter into the homes and so forth, we see this a lot of times, no problem. But if it actually, if it's private land and it's a private house, you cannot enter the house even if it's under construction. The last thing I will share with you today, inshallah, regarding this matter is it's very important that we teach our kids also the importance of seeking permission. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though this is inside the house, not coming into someone's house, but we're talking about permission and seeking permission, so I do have to cover this. Allah says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu li yasta'adhinkum uladheena malakat aymanukum waladheena lam yablughu al-hulma minkum thalatha marat min qabli sat al-fajr. So there are three times a day that the children should be taught that they should seek permission before they enter into a room. What time? Min qabli sat al-fajr. Before the time of fajr. Number two is, وَحِينَ تَضَعُونَ ثِيَابَكُمْ مِنَ الظَّهِيرَةِ There was a time in the afternoon where people were want to be very comfortable. So sometimes they will wear a little less clothing. So at that time, also they should be seeking permission. And number three is, وَمِن بَعْدِ صَلَاةَ isha After صَلَاةَ isha then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what about those children when they grow up? Allah says, Even if they have grown up and now they have some kind of shu'ur and they have some kind of understanding, even in that situation, 
Even in that situation, they must take permission before they enter. Now, it's very important that we teach our kids these kind of things. Even if you want to enter the room, you knock on the door. And the same thing, knock three times, and the parents may be in, the father may be inside alone, the mother may be inside, uh, inside alone, but you, you knock three times, and then you walk away. Not only that, but we find today, in many cases, we find children who think they're so smart, they'll put their nails inside the, you know, the locks, and they will open it and just come inside, you know, and they have this big smile on their face, like, mashallah, they, they broke a safe or something, okay? So what happens is that we got to teach our children that this is incorrect. I remember when I was a kid, even if we saw a door open, and I'm sure many of you will resonate with this, when we saw even a door open, you just don't walk into a room. You go, by, you go to the door and you do like this. Right? You knock on the door, make them aware that this is, can I come in or not? But our kids, subhanAllah, there's like, you know, ghar ka, bab ka ghar, you know? So just walk inside anywhere they want, you know? So it doesn't work like that. We have to teach our kids proper etiquettes and proper adab. Now, last thing part of this is, even we find in our deen, that when it comes to people living in our homes who are considered our mahrams, even in their case, we must seek permission also. So if we have our mother living with us, okay, she's a mahram, she has her privacy and so forth, we need to uh, give her privacy, but not, that also means knocking on the door. If we have our sister living with us, okay, respecting their privacy also, okay, now, when, usually when I bring this up, you find a lot of girls who are like, okay, then I can tell my dad not to walk into my room, okay? And, and when it comes to boys and girls, since tarbiyah is the responsibility of the father and the mother, okay, the parents can create some rules to respect the privacy, but often children and youth want privacy in their rooms when they have the shaitan, okay? Or they have a computer, shaitan number two, okay? Or they have something else in their room. That's why I've always been an advocate of this, okay? Do not let your children sit with a gadget alone in their room. See, you know, I, I told this to a kid, a child one time. He was like, oh, you think I'm so bad? I said, no, no, I don't think you're bad. Shaitan is bad, you understand? I'm not putting it on him or her. I'm saying that because you can be influenced by shaitan, if others... Who have been, who have, who, whose iman's, whose iman level is so high, if they can in be influenced by shaitan, you're nothing, you understand? So a lot of times children say like, well, you know children are very smart. Well, you don't trust me, okay? You know, this is a very typical response. So you don't trust me? No, no, I trust you. I don't trust shaitan, you understand? That's who I don't trust, okay? So that is why I'm always, this is my principle. I don't, you don't let your kids sit with a gadget inside the room. We'll see how long they can sit in the room after that, okay? But after that, since the parents are responsible for therapy of their children, they should have this understanding that you cannot keep the door closed at all times. As a parent, I'm responsible for therapy. I got to make sure that you're not involved in anything that is wrong. And after you become an adult and you, you move out of the house and you can have your own life, but while you're living under my roof, you are under my responsibility. So it's not like where parents can just barge in at any time. But at the same time, you have to respect, you might have older sons, older daughters, if they're changing their clothes or anything of that type, try to have somewhat of an understanding, but they should also understand that if they have this mindset that my room is off limits and my parents can never enter my room without my permission, no, it doesn't work like that either. So these are, inshallah, many things. You can always come back, inshallah, and this will be uploaded, inshallah, soon. But you can come back and listen to these, inshallah. And next, we'll be talking about even when you go to someone's house, uh, when you go to someone's house as a guest, Okay, as a guest, what things you have to keep in mind? Okay, like especially when people go to someone's guest house and you see some mail, oh, oh, you know. So the thing is that those kind of things you cannot. Okay, so one just want to make that very clear. Brother, what's my your question? I have already mentioned that. Yes. Yeah, so I, I mentioned that. So most importantly, as, as Brother Sayyidus uh, Man is saying, that don't spread things about, if you see even something in someone's house, 
Astaghfirullah. Okay? No, you, you don't go around telling people in the community and things of that type. Let's, inshallah, let's maintain these adab, these, these points of adab, and make sure we teach our children, inshallah, these important things also. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما